Let's take a look at how we can work with Salesforce Change Data Capture in Streamsets Data Collector. As in relational databases like uh, Oracle, Change Data Capture or CDC just gives us the changes to uh, database records as they occur. So unlike performing incremental queries where we just get the current state of the database, CDC tells us what has happened. So that way we get uh, updates with the list of updated fields. We, get, we even get deletes with the record ID of the uh, deleted record. So here's a very simple pipeline that'll let us listen for uh, CDC events. Now I've got the standard Salesforce origin here. Um, I have the credentials for a developer edition that I'm using and I've enabled subscribe for notifications. So this lets me fill in this subscribe tab and the subscription type here is change data capture. So that's fairly self-evident. I could choose push topic or platform event, uh, but obviously we're dealing with CDC here. And here I'm actually leaving the name of the object blank. Now we could subscribe just for changes to say account or contact or uh, any other uh, Salesforce object that supports CDC, but I can leave it blank and it's going to receive all change events on all objects that have been enabled for CDC. So when those events arrive, they're going to flow to an expression evaluator. And here I'm pulling out the record IDs uh, attribute Salesforce gives us the changed fields as data, but it keeps the record IDs as metadata. So we simply move those out of the uh, record header attribute into an actual record field. And I'll delve a little bit deeper into that in a minute or two to show you, uh, to show you how that's working. And then finally, we simply write to S3. Now there's one real important uh, factor here. I'm writing into a bucket I'm using Salesforce as my common prefix, so that's going to be the beginning of the path within S3. And then here's the crucial bit. I set a partition prefix. So a partition prefix is essentially a variable that lets me put different kinds of data in different places in S3. So here I'm using the Salesforce entity name as a partition prefix. So updates to um, accounts and contacts and cases will all go into different paths within S3. This will be very, very clear uh, once I get this thing going. So let's start the pipeline. And the thing to watch is the record countdown here. Now, if we go into an account, say we go into stream sets and let's go change something. What can we change here? Let's change the industry uh, and make it, I don't know, communications. Let's save that, and what we should see go back real quick, and that should hop from zero to one, there it is. And then if we go over to S3, there was nothing in that uh, bucket, and refresh, and here's the account. So we've created it in that account path within the bucket, and there's the file, and we can download that and take a little look. So if we show it in Finder, and open with sublime text. We can see there's the changed field. Salesforce gives us this last modified date because that changed as well. Okay, last modified, modified date changes on every change to an actual uh, field. And then we put that ID in there so we're able to identify the record that changed. So uh, let's go and have a little closer look at what uh, how those changes actually work. So we can do a snapshot here and say capture snapshot um, and go back here and if we make another change, so maybe change this industry again uh, to uh, engineering and save. Again, we go back here and what will happen is that, that ca we captured that snapshot and we can view it and then here we see the record as it's given to us by Salesforce. And what we'll do is we'll just make that big. So we can see the industry field there, that last modified date. And here in the record header, all of these fields that are prefixed Salesforce CDC, that's the metadata that Salesforce gives to us. And you can see that it's very rich. We've got the uh, Salesforce uh, user, that's a record ID of the user that made the change. We've got a transaction key there. 
Uh, we've got the entity name, the record ID, uh, the timestamp. So really we've got all the information uh, around that update uh, separate from the actual updated data, which is perfect because you know you get to pick and choose uh, which of these fields you want to pull out into the record. And that's exactly what we do in the um, expression evaluator. So we, we set that ID field and then we're able to write it to uh, S3. And then if we go over here, what we'll see, we go back to this account and refresh. And we've got two JSON files there now. So everything's working as we expect it. So um, there's another interesting thing we can do. If we consider um, many changes within Salesforce don't actually happen through users clicking around in the user interface. They may be the result of um, applications. They may be the result of um, rules that go on. And many, many records could be updated simultaneously. So let's go to the uh, developer console. So earlier on, I created a thousand test accounts. OK, they all begin with A and then uh, a counter here. So they, in practice, they all began with A0. So I can select those and set the website to the account name set to lowercase and update those. So I'm going to do just that. Let's execute that code. Um, it just takes a few seconds. It This happens synchronously, so it's Salesforce is update, updating those thousand accounts and then sending us back the results. So if we just scroll down to the bottom here, it should say, uh, yeah, we hit thousand rows here uh, in the query, thousand rows uh, updated, DML. And then um, if we go back here to come out of the snapshot, we can see now there's a thousand and two records being processed. And if we go over to S3 and refresh, we can see there's a third uh, file here. We just get them into uh, most recent first. And um, this is much bigger. This is 89K instead of 85 bytes. And indeed, we can download that guy and uh, show it in Finder and open Sublime. And here, exactly as we would want it, we've got a single JSON file in S3 that uh, should be a thousand rows long with every single update that happened within that Salesforce transaction. So this is behaving um, very nicely indeed for synchronizing data. Now, the other neat thing here is um, I could be changing multiple Salesforce record types. So let's just edit this contact. So. Andy Young over at Dickinson PLC. Maybe we give him a promotion from uh, VP to SVP. And what this is going to do is, again, a counter will tick up to 1003. And then if we go over here to um, S3, go into Salesforce, refresh, and now that contact is coming in its own path and we've got the JSON for the contact update there. And a really, really nice feature of this is, you know, if this is a production pipeline, it's running all nicely um, and we decide, oh, we want to enable change data capture on uh, another object type. So maybe we want to enable it on case. We just move that over. So this is a Salesforce setup UI. So we select case as uh, for uh, change data capture. We hit save down here. And now what's going to happen is that as well as an account and contact changes, my uh, case changes are going to be synchronized over as well. And we can just do that very quickly here. We can say, OK, let's go to a, a support case here and uh, let's jump into this one. And OK, it's uh, not as important as we thought it was. It's a medium priority. And uh, let's go over here. This should tick over to 1004. And then over in S3, we can see that if we go back to Salesforce, refresh, we've got cases now. And uh, there's that uh, 
change there. Let's just download it just to close the loop here. Show in Finder and uh, open with Sublime. And we've got that uh, case, case ID and priority change to medium. So change data capture with Salesforce and Streamsets Data Collector. Thanks for watching.